And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! This is a new intro because it's not Act 3, so I'm workshopping it. It's time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to casually saunter our way into finally of eventually getting around to discussing our all-natural, lemon-scented, extra-strength, low-fat, non-GMO, and now available without a prescription movie of the week. And this week, <coughs> we celebrate Halloween with a look at the 1986 film Trick or Treat, a.k.a. Ragman, which is a name I absolutely hate. Yes. With a passion. Um... So, 1980s heavy metal horror movie starring Skippy from the TV show Family Ties and featuring cameos from not yet sober Ozzy Osbourne yes. and noted anthropomorphic nutsack Gene, a, a Gene Chaim Witz Simmons. Yes. This is very much a cool... Jeans wearing, cigarette smoking, hairspray abusing, 1980s heavy metal movie. Uh, it has a it, it has a big cult following from people who were jeans wearing, cigarette smoking, hairspray abusing 80s heavy metal fans in the 80s. Yes. They look at this movie. It's oh, it's like a time capsule. Back to my childhood, and it's like, okay, I understand that, but fucking Skippy? I saw this movie in the drive-in, and it sucked then, okay? Just to be clear, not that it's not fun, but this is not a good movie. It is not a good movie. But Skippy, though! Yes, starring Skippy in his breakout role, the role that made his career... Starring Skippy from Family Ties. Okay, so for the uh, all of you uh, whippersnappers out there, uh, Family Ties was a sitcom in the 80s that they uh, did a really good parody of in an episode of WandaVision. Yes. Uh, the I liked the concept, which is explained in the opening credits, and, and the concept is we used to be super fucking hippies now it's the 80s, and we have normal jobs and a life in the suburbs. And, like, we've gone straight. Yes. Sort of. And so, uh, I liked the show when it came out, and I thought it was really funny. It just pissed me off then, as it does now, that Michael J. Fox made being far right cool for a large amount of people. Yes. I, un- I liked his concept that if you are born into a family of left-leaning former pot-smoking hippies from the 60s and you're going to rebel against your parents, yeah, you're going to become a fucking Reagan-loving far-right douchebag. Yeah. Who wears ties all the time. Like, I get that. Which was but... hysterically funny. But, but the problem is, is that, like... The, the right doesn't understand jokes. Yeah. Yeah, the the people from the left thought Michael J. Fox's character was funny. The people from the right didn't realize it was supposed to be funny. Yeah. And they took yeah. it seriously. Yeah, I get that. So Skippy was the nerd friend in Family Ties. Yes. Um, the actor is now a cable TV writer and producer. He works for Disney Channel and uh, the Game Show Network. Oh, good for him. Good for him. He's getting work. Good He's for getting him. Work. Yeah, exactly. He's working. He's still in the business. You never know when Skippy's going to... You, you can't hold Skippy down. I am. I, I, I'm glad you said that. I thought he was somewhere naked in a bush somewhere. No. Drinking but, a mad dog. But since we're talking about shrubbery. 
No, but since we're talking about this, I'm going to tie my wife into this slightly. Um, knowing that Skippy is now a successful cable TV writer and producer makes me happy. Um, it took a, many years to watch episodes of Supernatural and not say, you know, that guy was booger in a sitcom in the 80s. <laughs> It took a long time for me not to be able to say that about what's his nuts. Really? Um, also, I knew that he was. I don't know who he was trying to tell. I just, it, it, that's just a fact that I have to say. I feel that a lot of Supernatural fans are just know him as that character from Supernatural. Mm, not the older ones, the younger ones probably. The younger ones? Yeah. But, um, oh, and then another fun fact. About yeah. the whole thing that's going on with uh, Baldwin? Yes, yeah, Alec Baldwin shot and killed someone, but it's not really his fault. It, a lot it, of people be... a lot of people on the far right are saying, Alec Baldwin should go to prison, and it's like, wait a second, you think that that kid that killed three people during a Black Lives Rally, Black Lives Matter rally, shouldn't go to jail, but Alec Baldwin accidentally discharged a firearm, and now that he's a left-leaning actor, you're like, oh, throw him in jail and throw away the key. Yeah. It just pisses me off. The whole thing pisses me off. But what were you saying? Oh, well, well, personally, I am, I, am, I am staying neutral on this topic until we get all the fucking facts. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you there. I've been reading a lot of Twitter threads, even including one from uh, an armorer who uh, an um, armor, not for this specific film, but explained all of the safety pro protocols that they have, that they have to keep. Um, anyways, but the thing is, is that the actor <clears throat> who played Fun Boy, who ended up being the one who killed Brandon Lee, yeah. was also in Supernatural with Jensen Ackles, who is in Rust with Alec Baldwin. And just to tie that even further in, the Fun Boy character that he played in the movie was played by Ty Olson in the show, who played two different parts on Supernatural. You would have been really, Everything goes back to Supernatural eventually. You would have been really good at um, seven, Kevin Bacon. Seven degrees. Seven Kevin degrees Bacon. of Kevin Bacon. Hold on, honey. I'm going to skip to near the end of my discussion to mention something. Okay. Funny. The director of this is Charles Martin Smith. He's also an actor. And you... He, he has... he He's like a character actor. He's had a bunch of small parts and a bunch of different things. Yeah. Um, he was in American Graffiti, The Untouchables, Starman, X-Files. He's one of those actors where yeah. it's like, I say Charles Martin Smith, you have no idea who the fuck I'm talking about. No, but, but, if you... but you said American Graffiti, and I was like, God damn it, that was Toad. I thought it was Toad. Yeah, so like if you bing him and you see his face, you go, yeah, it's that one guy. He was also yeah. in an episode of Leverage. Which uh, my which is my wife's new obsession. Um, new? My my wife's recent obsession. It's kind of an ongoing. Charles thing. Martin Smith. Okay, so it's that guy. Oh, I've seen him in a yeah. bajillion different movies, and uh, he, yeah, he he was in an episode of Lavrage. Yeah, um, that's the episode where he's a banker, and I recently just watched that episode. Actually, there you go, boom! I knew you could you could uh, tie it all together. <coughs> yeah. Always. Oh, and Psych. Yeah, he was he in an. He was the mayor. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that one. He was the mayor. Yeah. He was no, also. Um, I actually had a dream last night about. Uh, um, well, it featured Elliot Spencer from Leverage, played by Christian Kane, and I was telling Mal about it. Um, and I said, it's weird because I haven't watched Leverage in forever, and they laughed at me. <laughs> and I was like, two days is a long time for me. To My watch wife leverage. watches so much Leverage late at night that a large portion of my dreams now include high concept heists. Nice. Oh no, I'm at school and I forgot to put on pants. I'll have to steal the pants back from the company that took them. <coughs> First, I'm going to need, need a team. Johnson, you're oh, on man. recon. God damn it. <laughs> you um, son of a bitch. 
but I'm in. Yeah, no, I was uh, late to my plane, and Elliot was escorting me because he had a bad feeling about it. And uh, apparently two of the airplane workers were after my laptop because I guess, for some reason, I'm not even sure why, <coughs> I had an unreleased, brand new Britney Spears album on my laptop that is, like, the only source. And Honey, they were trying I'm, to go I'm for just going to tell you this now. If you have this unreleased Britney Spears record, don't play it backwards. No. Do not. And do not play it at midnight. So Elliot Especially. Spencer and I had to kick some ass to make sure that my laptop didn't get stolen. And that album get out. Nice. Um, yeah, so I don't know, man. I'm just my brain does weird things. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. I dig that. Anywho, I was never into heavy metal. Yeah. You know? That was my brother's thing. He was all the, the jeans and the... the... I, I, I wasn't into this. What? You know? Yeah. This weird kind of... I don't know. But but if we're counting Led Zeppelin as heavy metal, if we're mm. counting Black Sabbath as heavy metal... That's yeah. a good point. Because that was good always... and interesting music. But like, <laughs> But like, this is more... Hair bandish. Yeah. And I, I, I was not a hair band person. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I wasn't know really... all the music because I was stuck in that time period. Yeah. I, I, I was never that much into heavy metal music growing up. To be clear, when this movie came out, I was only four years old. As far as any of you listening or watching this know. Uh, <laughs> but I did, I, I did feel a small ting, a small ping of excitement when I saw that one of his millions of, uh, posters was Anthrax. Yeah. I liked that. I was a big, uh, I, I, I was a big fan of Anthrax when I, there, I had an Anthrax period. Yeah. Their Among the Living album was awesome, especially when I learned that the song Among the Living is literally just them recounting the plot of Stephen King's The Stand. Really? Yeah. Yeah, their, yeah, their song Among the Living, Among the Living, Follow Me or Die. Like, disease, disease, spreading the disease. Yeah. Something, something, Captain Trips. Yeah, it, it's, they literally just read The Stand and said, this would be a kick-ass metal song. And that's it. Cool. So, I liked Anthrax, but I but I I do love '80s heavy metal though, and let me tell you why. Um, all of these young, predominantly white kids used heavy metal to proclaim their masculinity. Yeah. And they're like, "Hey, what's up? I'm gonna get drunk." And take off my shirt and just party my ass. I am heterosexual. Man, let me just put on my leather jacket, my makeup, do my hair, put on my lipstick, put on my studded bracelet, my studded necklace, and start moshing. And if you don't know what that is, it's a bunch of shirtless guys slamming their sweaty bodies together. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love being a heterosexual male. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, hetero heavy metal fans. Yeah, let me just take off my shirt and lick my guitar neck in a straight way. Yes. Totally 100% fine. I'm just saying that most people are gay and don't want to admit it to themselves. Cough, cough, Tom Wayne. <laughs> but I, when I first saw the film, because I hadn't seen it before now. I saw bits and pieces of it on TV throughout the years, but that's about it. This is the first time that I sat down and watched it. But I, uh, the first half of the film, I was all excited for it because I thought they were doing a Rosemary's Baby with this in the sense that, hey, maybe Skippy's just going fucking insane and he's killing people. Yeah. And maybe, uh, you know, Sammy Kerr's vengeful spirit is just all in Skippy's head. 
but then like oh it's time for the dance and he sh it, it's like oh well then fuck no this isn't all in his head this is a fucking ghost story but yeah. it, this this is another thing that i'd like to talk about when it comes to horror movies i'm not thinking of anything in in particular but i think that this is something that happens in horror movies and it happens here and it's like oh they've arrested the ex-wife and it's like why did you do it why did you kill him i didn't kill my ex-husband it was a ghost yeah the ghost of my mother is possessing this house and she killed him and it's like a likely story you'll be seeing life for this murder and then the ghost shows up and the ghost starts killing people and the ghost kills some cops and the the ex-wife runs off and then eventually ah oh, i managed to defeat the ghost finally everything is fine you are still going to jail for the rest of your life, right? Oh, yeah. Fucking Skippy is going to fucking jail. Yes. Even though there's, like, a whole, like, like a g gymnasium full of people who saw Stacy Jacks come back to life and kill a bunch of people with his magic uh, guitar licks. And even though a policeman was like, holy shit, that's a dead fucking musician I saw on the news. Ozzy Osbourne was talking about how he's evil. Still, most people aren't going to believe that a dead musician came back to life as a ghost and killed people. Skippy's getting the chair. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, it, I would one day like to see a sequel to a horror movie actually show the logistics of these horror movies you know yeah. well that's why I, that's why i love the end of baby driver because baby driver went to fucking jail yeah yeah that is very much a realistic look at it yeah and it was like you just never see this yeah because it's not just horror movies it's like just about you know the avengers get away with busting up an entire city. Yeah. You know? And there's no consequences for that, really. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we've finally defeated the ancient evil. Yeah, but eventually the police are going to come a-knocking and someone's going to jail. Yeah. And they're not going to believe that I didn't kill these people, it was the vengeful ghost. And it's like, no, fuck off. Like, you're going to jail for a really long time. Any, any a, action movie yeah. as well. Yeah. A, a good chunk of romantic comedies <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> it, the, the, the main problem that I had with this movie is that on the outside, yeah, it's a movie about young people and heavy metal and rock and roll will never die, but if you really think about what the plot of this movie is, what the evil is, how the evil came to be. I'm pretty sure that this script was written by Ronald Reagan, Jesse Helms, and Tipper fucking Gore. Yeah. Because this movie came out in the 80s, and it's about a heavy metal fan who plays a heavy metal record backwards and summons the ghost of a dead musician who starts killing people. But we pretty much had the satanic panic going on right at the same time. Yeah, Which, so this feels this feels like a heavy metal version of Mazes and Monsters. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's what's going on here. Is that Mazes and Monsters, Tom Hanks' film about the evils of Dungeons and Dragons, that's this, but with heavy metal music. It kind of pissed me off. That, like, I can see heavy metal fans looking at this and going, oh, man, this is incredible. This reminds me of my childhood. I love these bands and this type of music, and wow, this brings me right back to being picked on in the gym or whatever the fuck. But it's like, no, you don't get it. This is an anti-heavy metal movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. The yeah. movie tries yeah, to be... Yeah, your hero turns out to be everything that they have said he is. Yeah. So the movie tries to be like, uh, oh, hey, young people and heavy metal lovers. But in reality, 
This is a movie written by your mom. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ridiculous. <coughs> and also, you could never remake this movie today because it would be a 10-minute yeah. movie and Skippy would just shoot up the fucking school. Yes. He's yes, got he mad... This uh, was this was almost a month, but I could not dig up enough movies, you know. But that was something that I was considering for my month of October. Yeah. Just heavy metal horror movies, you know. So, but I only had this and Black Roses, mm, and then I, okay. I couldn't come up with with the other ones, like uh, yeah. Rock and Roll Nightmare had a German guy just talking over the movie in that German. That sucks. That's weird. And I found this other film, which I really want to watch, because I have not seen it before. It's not that terribly old. I forget when it's from. It's a Japanese movie called Wild Zero. Mm hmm Okay. And the plot is is that an uncle gives his adult nephew a ring. And when he was in the presence of evil, he could rub the ring and it would summon the heavy metal band Wild Zero and they would fight the evil. I already love this. That sounds like an awesome fucking movie. Yeah, it does. But I, 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 I don't even know if it works. But I had to grab like a separate subtitle track. Yeah. And I don't even know if it works. And I had no idea, even if it did work, how the hell I would get it to you. <clears throat> yeah, I you get know? that. So, these are the things that stopped this October from being. Heavy metal horror movie October. We went with the westerns instead, and I still think the westerns was a damn good October. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Um, Mal has been binge watching a good place, and every time that I see Derek, the character of Derek, I'm like, oh man, he was amazing in El Topo. <laughs> he was incredible in that. I forgot to mention something. The director of Trick or Treat, Charles Martin Smith, he still directs to this day. He directed the kids' movie Dolphin's Tale and Dolphin's Tale 2 and A Dog's Way Home. Oh. Okay. Fuck. He was, he was the little tiny piece of cheese guy? Yeah, he was the dog gets taken by the homeless guy, and the homeless guy dies, so the dog is attached to the corpse yes. for days. Yeah, the guy who directed that also directed fucking Trick or Treat. <laughs> That's a fucking trip right there is what that is. Yeah. And again, like I said earlier, for a, a rock and roll horror movie... There was an amazing lack of music. And then, like, okay, so you would think if you're making a, a, a heavy metal horror movie, okay, get Scorpion, get Wasp, get Stinger, get uh, Motley Crue, get Judas Priest, get, like, you can have an insanely wonderful soundtrack, but most of the music was done by some British heavy metal band I've never fucking heard of before. No. And, like, he gets invited to a pool party. A Teenagers. pool party. Party. This party in this word, he was invited to a pool party. Gets there. Everybody's swimming and jumping in the pool. No fucking music. Yeah. No yeah. music at a party? And then, and then this is something that happens in 80s movies where it's like, I'm sorry. Hey, you weirdo. I don't remember. You need to get out of this party. Here, we're going to fill you with a massive weight and throw you in this pool in an attempt to end your life. And then later that night, he's like, 
Those guys are always bullying me. No, that was attempted murder, you fucking yeah. dumbass. They literally tried to fucking kill you. This isn't a, gee whiz, one of these days I'm gonna stick up to those guys. They tried to fucking kill you, yes. Skippy. Piss me off. God damn, I'm upset about this. That deeply upset me. Yeah. Haven't done a lot of 80s movies. So this movie was released by D.E.G., the De Laurentiis Entertainment <coughs> Group. Dino yes. De Laurentiis. Uh, his company, D.E.G., also released Maximum Overdrive, King Kong Lives, Pumpkinhead, Tape heads and Earth Girls Are Easy, uh, among others. Yes. So uh, I'm assuming <coughs> that the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group was just 50% cocaine. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And definitely following the Roger Corman filmmaking model. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. In fact... Uh, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group went bankrupt just as they were in pre-production on their biggest film to date. Patrick Swayze stars in Total Recall. Really? Yeah, yeah. Patrick well, they Swayze. Also, they also did the Evil Dead movies. Uh, Evil Dead 2. Uh, <coughs> Dio Rentis two? Entertainment Group released Evil Dead 2 and then after the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group went bankrupt for a while the entire DEG library was sold to an entertainment company named Paravision in 1989 and Paravision was a subsidy of L'Oreal Cosmetics so okay. to be clear there's a lot of Evil Dead fans out there, but no one's talking about the fact that for a time, Maybelline owned Evil Dead 2. Nice. I think that's something that more people should be talking about. Yeah. Fucking Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe it's the undead. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <coughs> Skippy the Ragman. Skippy, Skippy the rag. Ragman. That's my, if I ever really get into Dungeons and Dragons, that's my character name. Yeah. Skippy the Ragman. I'm a traveling bard and part-time <clears throat> part amateur proctologist. Yes. That's my character. Figured it out. So that's all I've got for this week's movie. You got anything else, Bunny? Uh, I forgot if, if you accept that it's a bad movie and it's really stupid, it is fun. Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, fun watch if you, can, if you can ignore or embrace a lot of the stupidity that you're seeing. Yeah, the first time I saw it, I'm like, this is a pretty bad movie. I, this, is, this is pretty bad. This is pretty shit. But by the time I'm watching it a second time or a third time, I'm like, okay, this is dumb fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so, yeah, it, it, it was dumb, but in a really fun way. Yeah. Yes, it was. Uh, that's really all I have about to say about it, I think. <clears throat> okay. I remember oh, his look. mom was really big at the time. She did a lot of fucking game shows and shit. She was in Motel Hell. <clears throat> Was she in Motel Hell? Yes, I haven't seen that in forever. And I thought about doing it next week because uh, you're doing a Halloween movie and I'm doing a Halloween movie. And so I was trying to figure out what movie to do. And at first I was thinking Halloween 3, but I am really fucking Halloweened out. Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. And then I thought about doing Motel Hell, but like... I wanted to see a dumb horror-type movie. I didn't want to see 
what is essentially a horror comedy. Yeah. But not really a horror film, and I feel that that's what Motel Hell is. And I thought, well, maybe I just need to look outside the box. Maybe I need to find something different. So, we're watching a movie on YouTube, and I'm super excited. Okay. It is in Spanish with English subtitles. So you need to put the subtitles on for this. I'm super excited that I found one of these movies with English subtitles. Next week, we are watching... The 1970 film in English, Santo and Blue Demon versus the Monsters. Oh, okay. Also known as Santo y Blue Demon versus Los Monstruosos. I fucking think. But I found it with English subtitles on YouTube, and it's in high quality. So next week... Santo and Blue Demon versus the Monsters, and it's got all of them. It's got the Mummy, it's got Frankenstein. It might have a Blackula, I don't remember, but I haven't seen it in the longest time, and I never saw it in a way that I could understand it. But Didn't we do that on the show previous? I mean, not with the subtitles. No, the yet, subtitles. We, we did uh, El Santo versus the Martians. Oh, okay. It, verse, it, El Santo and the Invaders from Mars. Is what it was called, and we didn't know we. I couldn't find it in English, but we just watched it, and it was a bunch of fun, and I really dug that. Yeah. But yeah, we're doing another Santo movie, but this one's in color. It's in the seventies. I think El Santo's pushing like fifty in this, so he is getting older. Okay. So it's a different part in Santo's life, and plus we got Blue Demon in this, his uh, arch rival slash best friend. Yes. I think this is the movie where they're there in like, in like sport coats, playing chess together. You know, really? while while sipping a drink, just playing chess with their freaking masks on. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to do another El Santo movie. Okay, cool. That sounds so, like fun. Yes. So next week, I'll send you the link uh, as soon as we're off. Uh, so next week. We're doing a 1970 El Santo movie, which I'm really excited about. Also, next week, we're going to be discussing uh, Shang-Chi some more. And uh, we, I will be watching the new Dune movie, which everyone says, oh, my God, it's the best. Uh, and I may or may not drive an insane um, a way away to see another film. But, uh, yeah, but that's next week. So join us next week uh, for, for more of the Pope on film, but now I'm looking back at this one. Uh, shorter show, new format, uh, Halloween Kills, Ron, Ron's Gone Wrong, Professional Dogfighting, uh, The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, The Ragman, and how heavy metal music is so heterosexual. I gotta say, I <laughs> think that this has been a pretty good new episode of the podcast. This has I, been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes. I feel like you were the person who makes that distinction and not me, so I you know, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna intrude on what is usually your job, but yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of That's Natasha that. and Maxwell and Eleanor and Mal and everyone else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Hey, you do show up with the poopy jets? I mean, litter bugs. <laughs> litter bugs <laughs> are creatures. <coughs> yes, Eleanor? And you're a kitty. And you kitties, nice. Do 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 Skinny pop and do wow cut and print. And cut out cookies. Nice. I saw that on there. There you go. Cut and print.